when looking at problems associated with a drilled tank, uh, or a, you know, for that matter, a piggyback overflow drain, uh, there's a couple of questions that come up or a couple issues that can happen. And one would be what happens if the power goes out and the pump that's in the refugium is no longer working. And the other case, uh, kind of the worst case scenario type thing would be what happens if the outflow drain, in this case the drain I have on the upper left of this tank, what happens if that gets plugged? You know, so I, I, I leave and go out of the country and out of town you know, fairly regularly and when I'm gone I can be gone for up to seven or ten days and so if there was plant debris or even you know even if a dead fish got stuck up on the drain what would happen if water can't exit from the top of that aquarium and so what we're going to do is look I'm going to show you guys first the kind of setup and talk about a couple of things um, in regards to that and then we'll take a closer look and it'll actually show you what happens when I turn the filter off or I plug that drain on the top left of the aquarium. So I've zoomed in a little bit on the drain in the top left of my aquarium. And if you're going to drain this yourself, or if you're, excuse me, if you're going to drill your aquarium yourself, then you want to measure carefully and make sure that you're only leaving a small amount of space between the top of your aquarium where the water is going to be and the opening to your drain. And you can see this is a pretty standard drain. There are several sections to it that are open, so even if something sits on top of the drain, it would still have at least some openings to allow water to go through. So it's pretty unlikely that this drain is going to get completely plugged. But as you'll see, even if you, have, you know, partially plug the drain, water can slowly build up in the aquarium. And so, you know, what I'm going to show you here is, uh, you know, it's kind of what happens when you plug that drain, and also what happens when you stop the pump. But in this case, you just need to take note that you want your aquarium to be drilled properly as to kind of minimize the amount of water that's over top of that drain. More important than even the drilling of the aquarium is to have a refugium that's the right size for your aquarium setup. You want something that has plenty of space in it or excess water that might drain down from the aquarium. Uh, when I first was setting this up, I was actually only going to use a 10 gallon aquarium and make my own refugium rather than purchase one from eShops like I have here. But in the end, when I got it home and started getting it set up for it and taking a look at it, it became pretty apparent that there was not going to be a lot of space in that refugium for excess water. And so if you're going to do it yourself and build your own refugium, you just want to make sure that you have one that's plenty large for excess water. And then the other thing that you'll find out pretty fast when I show you what happens when you plug your drain on the top of the aquarium there is that you see those baffles in the refugium. And those baffles are these plastic pieces that you can see that separate the refugium into different compartments. And in addition to separating into different compartments for plants and soil and those things, it actually is really important because the only amount of water that gets drained out of that refugium after the after the uh, outflow from the aquarium is plugged is that small compartment on the far right. Everything else is not going to reach the pump to be put back into the aquarium and that's why you don't have to worry about issues with flooding. But I'll show you that here. It's sometimes it's easier to see it rather than talk about it. So the first thing I'm going to do is simulate a power outage and to do that I'm just going to unplug the two filters I have. So. I'll unplug the canister filter that's also emptying in the top left. That's what's creating that current up there. And then I'll, I'll unplug the uh, drain, or the, the, excuse me, the, the pump in the refugium that's pumping water back. And so you'll see kind of what happens here when I do that. So the first one we're going to unplug is that canister filter. And then the second one that's being unplugged there is the drain, or excuse me, the pump from the refugium. And when that happens, we should start seeing water moving backwards into the refugium. And as it does, it will see water from the tank emptying uh, or kind of getting lower and lower. And so I'll move down towards the refugium here so you can see what's happening.
So this is what it looks like when there's no return pump from the refugium and the water is completely drained from the aquarium into the refugium. So now the outflow drain on that top left is completely out of water, but as I'll show you in a second, you know, the you have to remember that your your return side, you know, so the plumbing that goes up to the return side from the refugium, you know, that when the pump turns off, that's going to reverse and act like a drain also. So you have to be careful on where you have your return side at as well. But I'll show you here in a second how this works and why it's important to make sure that you have things uh, kind of worked out. So from this angle, you can hopefully see that the return plumbing is uh, partially out of the water. And when that's out of the water, you're not going to be getting any more uh, drainage from that side. And obviously the left side is out of water as well. So we kind of scroll over there and see see a little bit, but that plumbing on the, uh, the outflow drains, of course, out of water as well. And so this is the equilibrium. This is kind of where everything is at when there's no active drainage in the, in the, in the tank. So now uh, what I'll do is I'm going to turn the drains back on, or excuse me, I'm going to turn the pumps back on and get water back in the aquarium. And then when we do that, I'm going to plug the uh, drain the outflow drain on that top left side of the aquarium so you can see what happens if something was to obstruct that and show you kind of the opposite side of the spectrum. And so I'm going to put a little bag over top of the outflow drain and show you that side of it as well. But uh, if you look, if you want more information on the plumbing setup and kind of, I have another video that I'll put a link to in the bottom of the, uh, or in the description. Now I'll just have you click on that if you want more, uh, you know, more angles and, and discussion on the actual plumbing setup to the aquarium. But for these purposes, I'm just going to take a bag and put it over top of the plumbing. And so from looking down at the refugium, you can see that the drain has pulled all that water that was in the refugium back into the aquarium. And it's now, you can hear it, sucking, the, sucking air on the bottom side there. And uh, this is where I goes back to talking about the baffles and the refugium and, and how important they are. You can see how much more water is in that refugium. I mean, the plant compartment's full and the sock side's full, and yet the refugium is dry from the pump standpoint. And so that's why it's important to have, uh, to have those baffles set up correctly. In the aquarium, I'll pull back here so you can see, but in the aquarium, you know, there's just a little bit of extra water in there now. It's hard to see it on the camera. But uh, you see there's air coming out from uh, the return side. But there's just a little bit of extra water in there. In fact, if you can see up, you can barely see where the, bra uh, the bracing on the aquarium is, is now touching the water. But there's still half an inch, at least, of, uh, uh, of, of room to go before this would have a problem with uh, overflow. And so you can see that correctly setting up an aquarium's plumbing uh, can eliminate the risk of having power outages or a block drain. And so this aquarium video was an idea or was at least a question from somebody on my original video of how to set up a discus aquarium. So if you guys have any questions or have a topic that you think would make a good video, uh, let me know and when I get a chance I can put it together. But I think this is a, at least it should help alleviate some of the concerns when you are first starting out about what happens to you know, aquariums when the power goes out and you have these outflow drains. There are certainly setups that can be dangerous for flooding or that can lead to flooding, but if it's done correctly and you take your time with your setup, you can make it to where there really is no risk from that standpoint.